Hey YouTubers, Mike Martins here, Mike Martins channel. I got another housing crisis uh, story that's gonna, it's actually reaching the interior of British Columbia. So a lot of young families left the coast and moved into the interior of British Columbia and it's, it's, it's hitting pretty bad out there, the housing crisis. Very sad story. Housing crisis tearing Kelowna families apart. So the working poor, middle class, they're really struggling to get, make ends meet, especially the working class families that work really hard to try and make ends meet, to try and get their lives in order, to try and phase this, this, this housing crisis that everyone's struggling with, even in the interior. So let's look at this. Kelowna, the province's watchdog for children and youth, says... Housing crisis in the Okanagan is hurting young people and families the most. Bernard Richard is a representative for children and youth responsible for helping young British Columbians and their families navigate the child and youth welfare system. He says that the housing crisis is resulting in some youth becoming vulnerable and some families are being torn apart. It's general rule! is the poverty and housing themselves are not significant to justify taking children into care. But if we're realistic, we know that it's taken into consideration along with other issues that might be present, he says. The rental availability rate in Kelowna is currently sits around 0.2%. That's horrible, people. Making it the hardest city in Canada to find a place to rent. The interior's largest city also has the biggest jump in rent last year, with the average cost increasing 8.6% to $1,043. That's a huge jump. Some wannabe renters in the Okanagan have gone to extreme lengths to find housing. So it's, it's tough. A city of Kelowna housing study released last year found close to one-third of renters spend more than 30% of their income on housing, which means more people are having to rely on the government and waitlist for a place to live until for a place to live appears to be growing longer every day. So more and more people are applying to get on this help list and blah, blah, blah. And according to them, the list is getting bigger every day and it's scary as a as of early this month, BC Housing Supportive Housing Registry for the Central Okanagan had 1,200 names uh, vying for roughly 190 units that meet provincial requirements for supportive housing. Galene Askland, ex uh, Executive Director of the John Howard Society and the Central Okanagan, told Infonews.ca earlier this month many of those on waiting lists are forced to use short term. Homeless shelters, those which children are at the mercy of the Ministry of Children and Family Development. Richard says issues like that during winter months, sanitary condition and safety could be all impacted by a temporary loss of housing. Housing is something that comes up a great deal in our work that we do. In the factor among whole host of factors that a child protection worker has to take into account. Families can't always find adequate housing. It certainly can make them more vulnerable. He says that youth uh, graduating out of the system are also being hit especially hard. With little to no family supports, they often end up either homeless or couch surf surfing. It's hard enough if you have a full-time, well-paying job, but you know that youth from care tend not to graduate from high school, so they are the low end of the employment scale. The issue, Richard said, is clearly significant and growing. The cost of housing is not going down. It is a major issue in the last provincial budget for the reason people are impacted by it. People of British Columbia are considered about the difficulty in finding affordable housing and making ends meet because the high cost of housing. Absolutely, I think it's getting 
worse. So this is pretty bad, guys. This is getting out of control. Uh, it's hitting small, uh, uh, the interior. It's a, Cologne is a big city, so, but it's hitting parts of the interior. You would think that they would have some sort of better measures in place and stuff, but, 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 there's a lot of people moving from the coast there. So, uh, there's about the article I read by Douglas Todd. I'll bring it up really quick here. for you guys. I need you guys to see this too. So what's been happening is there's been a huge demographical change. So this is it. Douglas Todd from the Vancouver Sun. Aboriginals and whites leaving Metro Vancouver. So the article I read about the amount of whites. So a new total of 9,345 whites and 460 indigenous people left Metro Vancouver for other parts of the province in one year period. So a lot of people are moving into the Okanagan, Kamloops, uh, uh, Kelowna area, those areas, Okanagan area, sorry, uh, and um, into the Fraser Valley. So what's been happening is people are leaving Vancouver in droves, and it's a huge demographic change, uh, huge migration happening within Canadians themselves, and it's putting a stress on cities like Kelowna and, and Kamloops, where their facilities aren't designed to have this much of an influx in, in, in migration into their cities uh, because of the great Vancouver buyout. Everyone's getting bought out of Vancouver, so it's becoming a lot more difficult for the Canadian proper to, to keep up with, with the, the price of housing and the cost of living. Anyways, I want to know what you guys think about this. Uh, it's tearing families apart. It's tearing everything apart. It's tearing people's futures apart. People 10 years ago would have never imagined something like this. Let me know what you guys think. Comment below. Thanks for watching.